Hello, ladies and gentlemen of Seems Good Magic. This is Travis Simulan Sowers, and we are jumping into a battle for Zendikar 8 4 single elimination fast build draft. So, what do we got going on here? I've been doing Innistrad all week because they've been doing flashback drafts, so I'm, I'm naturally looking for spider spawnings and bloodline keepers and giant preview pains for some reason. Um, as I'm kind of used to looking for that, but that's not what we have here. Yeah, I'm going to have to make these a little smaller. Probably going to take the Grip of Desolation. Like, that's probably just the best card here. It's, in many cases, a two-for-one. It's certainly a good card by itself. It goes in several decks, like any deck that has Swamps, obviously, is a good one in it. Um, Touch of the Void is really the only thing competing with it. And, like, you can draft a lot of creatures that can answer a three-toughness creature, but Grip of Desolation just kills anything and blows up a land in a format where people are splashing with minimal fixing as well. So I, I think that's just kind of exactly the droid we're looking for. So let's grab that and see what the rest of the Moto Gods have for us. Well, this is quite often how I find myself in the uh, white-black deck, is first picking a good black removal spell, second picking a good white removal spell, and then Bob's your uncle. You're playing white black. Um, we could consider the sludge crawler if we wanted to stick to black. I don't think it's unreasonable, although second picks a bit early for this. And we can consider the Merc Strider, as I do like blue black um, process and jest quite a bit, but nah, like the Gideon's Reproach is just way better than all of those other cards. Plus, it has Gideon on it and like a whip and floaty things. So I, I think we probably, of course, by that argument, we should be considering Inspired Charge, which we're not. But I think this is reasonable. Like, if the deck that we end up with gets to play either of these cards, I'm happy. And if we end up being, like, blue-black, yeah, we'll miss the Merc Strider, but you can get those super late. Like, what we should be looking for is, like, a really good card to pull us out of this, the, either of these colors. Now that we've gotten here... We've actually got a couple different directions to go. We've got Unified Front, which sticks with the colors that we have and could potentially be interested, interesting in a life gain deck. Um, we've got Outnumber, which if we want to do like a speedrun draft could work. It's where you draft you know, all two drops and try to kill them fast. I think the card I'm actually most interested in is Ulamog's Reclaimer. It still leaves us outs to go black-white, but if we get this, it's good in... Uh, like blue-white flyers, as you can buy back an Awaken spell, it's really, really good if you can buy back a Grip of Desolation. And, like, the Grip of Desolation turns it on. So, like, if we grab this and see, like, a Benthic Infiltrator and wheel that Merc Strider, we've, we've got a real thing going. There's also, of note, some green cards, but generally speaking, green kind of sucks. I'll draft it if it's absurdly open, but I'm not, not ready to go green just yet. Some not terrible stuff here um, with the Evolving Wilds, which I think is a relatively high pick in this format. Um, I think I'm just going to take the Malakir Familiar, though. Like, we've, we've got a good black card. This is another good one. It plays nicely in a black-white deck or a blue-black blue deck. Yeah, because you're going to have Flyers, too. I wouldn't hate anybody that picked the Evolving Wilds, but I think because we really want to get this grip in the deck, we're going to get a grip and take this Familiar. See what we've got going here. And so we're black red. That's good to know. Or are we? Hmm. So like there's a Blood Bond Vampire, which the fact that it's here means it's not super likely anybody's taking the life gain cards. So we could take it and move in. Turn against is absurd. Like you can splash this and it's just good. And it, it totally beats face. But I kind of feel like a fifth pick Blood Bond Vampire may be a sign that we should be playing this deck. I just, I think I've passed this card once. Like, yes, it's one more mana than Ray of Command, but Ray of Command was just so busted. Oh, this is tough. I'm, I'm going to, this is the deciding point of the draft. This is the, the part of the comments where everybody says, Travis is a genius. Travis is an idiot. We're taking the Blood Bond Vampire. Instant sadness. Instant sadness. 
Yes, we are very sad because we've got the relatively lackluster McKinney Patrol. Meh. And then we've got Touch of the Void, Forerunner of S Laughter. So I think rather than making the mistake worse, we need to just go ahead and take the Touch of the Void and be open to Black Red. If there was a black card here that I really liked, I'd take it. But there's not. And Touch of the Void is good. All right. Stupid Blood Bond Vampire. It's also pseudo possible that we could still be in black white. That's a bit unusual. I don't think Ulamog's Reclaimer is getting played. Yeah, we're kind of all over the place, but it's the first pack. It's okay. I'm going to take this so we still have outs to black white. Like, if we're black red, I'm not going to be crying that we can't fit a Shatter. That, oh my god, our deck would be so good if we had a Shatter Skull recruit. I'm just going to take this and kind of keep my eye on that Beastmaster. So, like, we can take the Retreat to Hagra to play with the Blood Bond Vampire. We could also take this Vestige of Emrakul to keep our outs open for the red. I still feel like passing that, that late turn against is just stupid. We can probably say we're not in blue. So, that makes our, our picks a little easier. I feel like the... Yeah, all we've really got out of white is an early Gideon's Reproach. I, I'm going to take the Vestige of Emrakul. It's not amazing, but I think that's probably what this deck needs. And then I get a Stonehaven Medic. I just... I don't... I don't even know anymore. We'll figure out exactly what we're doing later. Because clearly I don't understand it now. I like the Great Horn. I also feel like the Champion's probably fine. But we'll... Like, I'm going to hedge towards the black-white. You can play this in that deck. It's not amazing. But I, I guess we take it and put it over here and send the Beastmaster so somebody else can take it and go into it. Same with the Cub. It's okay. We pass enough red, people should be stuck on red. Gosh, I still feel weird with that... That vampire pick. Myers Malice is fine. I'll play that. But like that, that was the deciding moment of the draft. Basically, when I took this, I was committing to the life gain deck. I think. Time to open a Rolling Thunder and be absolutely punished. Maximum punishment engage. Or we could open an Obnoxilus. Obnoxilus? Meh. You know, the big demon guy that kills stuff, blows things up, draws cards. Things of that nature. Or we could just sit forever and wait for the pack to get opened. That could also happen. So much good light. Could we be Mardu? Seems like it would fit better in Dargons of Tarkir than here. Okay, open Zidrana of Hope. Um, and a Colostria Healer and a Gideon's Reproach. Like, if the deck's supposed to be open, then you take the Gideon's Reproach because it's just a way better card. But if we're actually thinking we're going to do the thing with the stuff, I don't want to be that guy who first picks a Colostria Healer. All right, kids, don't do this at home. It's not the right call. Or is it? Such a tough decision. Because I'm not wheeling it. Somebody else is going to take it. We're going to pass this to somebody who's going to say, Oh, white's open. I'll take white. Yeah, it, it's not a higher pick than Gideon's Reproach, even in the deck that wants it. It's This is just the right call. D discipline, Travis is discipline. It hurts, though. But it's, it's what we got to do. More instant punishment. Um, but Retreat to Emeria is good, and Lantern Scout is good. I think Retreat to Emeria is better, especially if we can get some more little ally synergies. Yes, exactly like the one I just passed. Um, but I think we take it here. There's no chance we wield this, but that's all right. I'll take a Retreat to Emeria. That's just kind of absurd. Um, Sheer Drop is fine. It's not amazing, but it's serviceable. I think we're kind of off on the, the red-black deck. We could have had a good one. 
Like there's a Nettle Drone here, Titan's Presence, there's cards for it. But I think we'll just keep taking the removal. Like right now, kind of our big finish is this Blood Bond Vampire, which I'm not convinced is a great finish. It's a Dampening Pulse, that's really good. Assassin's okay. I think I like Undo Rising in, in this style of deck. Like it's probably a 5 drop. But it can enable some things too. We need like a somewhat late... What's the 4-5 vampire that flies? You know the guy I'm talking about. That would be good. But I think overall I'm happier with the Gideon's approaches. And we don't have to play the front either. We've got a better version of it. And play it if we get short on playables. Same with the Cub. And maybe even the Lookout. Lookout's not bad with this. Callistra Nightwatch. Is that what it's called? That's what it's called. Mm, yeah. I found it's really hard to figure out what colors are exactly open in uh, Battle for Zendikar. That said, I'm going to pick a Sludge Crawler. Um, for a Ground Pounder, it's not a bad one. We don't really have any way to abuse the in indigestion we're going to get here, but that's fine. It can attack, it can block it, you can pump it. It does stuff. We also only have five creatures, so I should probably start taking them now. We've got a good removal suite between the drop, the grip, and two reproaches. What I'd really like to see is another Blood Bond Vampire or a, one of those Callistra healers. Does it seem like this deck is overdrafted a bit? Yeah, I may have just gotten hooked going in too fast with the Blood Bond Vampire be interesting to watch the draft again and kind of see how it would have would have gone. I, I do that often when I'm watching other people's drafts. Like, I'll write down my picks while they're making theirs. And through at least the first pack, you can kind of gauge where your deck would be versus theirs. It's kind of an interesting little experiment you can do. All right, so we've got a Breaker of Armies, which is a nifty finisher, but, I mean, casting an, an A drop is asking a lot. We've also got a Silent Skimmer, which, will, while not really fitting into what we're wanting to do with this deck, is a playable card that is black or white. So I think that means we take it, even though we're not, like, crazy excited about it. Uh, the Eyeless Watcher is good, too. Green, as it often is, is open. That's exactly the droid we were looking for. Hello there, Callistra Healer. That gives me some hope that the deck is open. We're just not getting all of the cards for it. So if pack three is a little above average, we may be able to go there. Okay, we've got an Altar's Reap. That's a very late Dampening Pulse. That card is kind of absurd. Like, it's really too late for us to go in on it, but that's a thing. I, I think because we're a bit low on creatures and because we've kind of got a hole at the three drop spot, spot I'm going to take the Shadow Glider like, it, it should do a pretty good job of poking our opponent. All right, we wield the Callistra Healer. All right, I think we actually have a deck now. I think we actually have a deck. So, like, we're starting to get really interested in, in finding additional allies. So, like, this guy loses a little value, this guy loses a little value. We want to be able to trigger this repeatedly, so that may actually make the Unified Front something we're pretty interested in. It certainly makes the Retreat to Emeria good. Um, but yeah, we're, we're starting to get very interested in additional allies, regardless of what their text says. Like, imagine we pick up one more of these, and then, I don't know, I, I'm probably getting a little greedy, but the little Serene Steward dude that pumps your pumps people when you gain life, we could get some Griffins. We could have a thing here. Maybe one more of these. It's a Vampire Shaman ally. That sounds like a road in some terrible city. Yeah, hang a left on Vampire Shaman Alley. This is why I shouldn't talk between picks. This may actually make these cliffside lookouts playable. We'll hold that. And I don't know that it's better than the Sludge Crawler currently. Because I kind of look at that as like a big thing. Again, light green removal. But that does kind of mean you have to play green. I think wheeling this from the opening pack when I was considering first picking it says the deck we want to draft is open as well as every other deck apparently 
That seems a bit light to me for the Valakut Predator. So we've got like some really good red cards in our sideboard, and by some really good red cards, I guess I mean Touch of the Void and the Valakut Predator. I have to remember there's a turn against in the draft. It's so easy to get blown out by that card. But knowing that it exists is at least half the battle, I guess. So what do we want out of this last pack? Mainly just anything that says ally on it. Like it's not absurd to think I cut this guy. And maybe the Great Horn, although Great Horn's pretty good. Maybe the Skimmer for these two lookouts just to get extra drains in. It's also another way to pump things besides the Retreat. I do not want to deal with Rush of Ice in the Awakened deck. Wouldn't mind some of the um, wider black lands that have spell effects when they come into play. Like that one. There, there you go. Thank, thanks, Moto Ojibus. It's a little scary in that it says we only have nine creatures. Really, we have like 12 if you count the Sheer Drop and the Andu Rising and the Unified Front, and like close to 13 if you count the Retreat to Emiria. If we get one more of these, I'm going to swap out the Sludge Crawler. I think that's my my thing. Because what, what else do I have to trigger it? We're looking at basically this guy, this, and this. So yeah, I'd like to replace the Skimmer, the Great Horn, and the Sludge Crawler with allies. But we have to get their own playables too. Looks like we can reclaim all of the vines that we would like to. Which is great. Except not. At all. Where's Soren? Shouldn't he be in this set? Like with all these life-gaining vampires and the black white life gain deck like why was he solemnly visiting Tarkir when there's all of this crap happening I thought he was involved in this story too like this seems like a great I was thinking what do we want to open well Soren would be great and I guess he's going to be in shadows over in Istriad, so they probably can't put him in like three sets back to back like that's a lot of Soren all right, so we've got Angel of Renewal, which is an ally, is a large drop, gains us life. It kind of does all the things, and we do want things done. If we weren't taking that, we're kind of not taking anything. So I think we can probably spare another six drop, although we got to be reasonable. Like, Sheer Drop quite often is a, a three-mana removal spell when I play it. And I guess we want to wield a bridge here, because none of the rest of this is stuff that we want. But sure, Angel, ally, gain us life, okay. That does that does things. Should probably just go ahead and make this swap. I think the ally triggers are now starting to be worth it. And by the ally triggers, I mean these two. That's not worth it. Ah, we've got some time. Serene Steward, what's up? Why are you in the same pack with a Blood Bond Vampire and a Complete Disregard? <laughs> like, this sucks. Because I want both of these cards. I want both of these cards badly, and I'm not sure which I'm supposed to take. Like, it feels like the Blood Bond v Vampire is going to be the, the way that this deck wins. I, you know what? I'm actually going to take the Steward, because any deck that's playing white can pick up fairly easily the Griffins and, and do something with that. Any deck that's playing black is probably going to be more interested in the Complete Disregard, and if those Colostra wheelers, Healers wield, there's a, a reasonable chance that I can wheel something else so this this does sort of do the same thing that the blood bond vampire does uh when it comes to putting counters on when you gain life it's just i get to choose where they go but i have to pay for them so i think since we've already got the combo of the medic i'd rather just have the steward and spread the love around and since we took took that gideon's reproach earlier we kind of don't need a complete disregard i mean we'd love to have it but i think i'm justified enough taking less steward now um, I'm kind of okay with the uh, Hagra Sharpshooter. Like, I'm not super in love with it, but it is a Mana Sink, which is, you know, never bad. And it's also an ally, so it kind of triggers everything else. There's Radiant Flames, a Chrome Stone Waker, because you know how rocks like to fall asleep. They'd be lazy. Uh, Stone Furry, which I guess is why you should shave the rocks. I, I don't know, but th this is the card for us. 
starting to get that ally sh- shenanigans going, I kind of feel okay about passing that reproach now, or not the reproach, the the complete disregard because we get a reproach here. It's a bit scary to see that clutch of currents, but you know, our deck is very reproachful. Like, what's up? We're gonna reproach you because we're jerks. Yeah, it's a shame that we couldn't get like an awesome card for our deck out of this pack and we have to hack this clutch of currents. Oh wait, there's a Drana's Emissary, which is kind of everything this deck wants. It's a vampire cleric ally. So yeah, we'll we'll probably play that. I could see that that fitting in the deck somewhere. We may not even need this cliffside lookout anymore. Like if I, I want to get really greedy, I could even say we don't need this unified front, although it still might be better than the silent skimmer. It does do some blocking though. I don't know, we'll, we'll wait and see. But like that that's a gift. So everybody saying I should have been red, you're clearly wrong cuz look. Cuz obviously results are everything. So the guy we passed the turn against to is passing us one this late. I don't understand how this game works at all. Uh, we're going to take a Malakir Familiar. It's a removal spell. It's a flyer. It slices. It dices, etc., etc. Um, I could probably work a Lithomancer's Focus in the deck, but I'm not going to not going to not take it. Maybe maybe now we can look at getting rid of the Zeskima. Is that just doesn't do a lot? An alley encampment, eh? So we do have a lot of allies. And I can return an ally to its owner's hand. Hmm. So I kinda like this. Like I could bounce this guy and get an extra drain. I could bounce something in response to a removal spell. It does it does things. Like, I think it does more things than a sandstone bridge. Like, maybe they use an enchantment to lock down. Like, there's not claustrophobia. I don't know. I'm going to take it. We'll see. We'll see if we play it. We we'll probably do. It could be a thing. I'm going to get rid of this great horn. What else do I have that's not an ally that's just not good? I guess Myers Malice isn't amazing. Like, it's a potential six drop, but whatevs. I think the steward is just good enough to be in there. Why, hello, there's a, another Callistra healer. And this one's foil, which is clearly superior to non-foil varieties. So why not? I think we're getting close to where I see if I wield that other Bloodbond vampire. And if I do, I think our deck's unbeatable and we just, we don't even really have to play the games. We can just sit down and be like, yo, this is our deck. You see it and we win. I've passed all the good green, so we're gonna we're gonna hack this guy. I don't need cliffside lookout number five hundred. Slight exaggeration, but I presume you are picking up what I'm putting down. And I was right. Nobody else is drafting this deck, and our deck just got to be quite good. Oddly enough, I probably would want that McKinney patrol over the shadow glider at this point. But uh alas was not meant to be. There's some argument for cutting Myers Malice and playing an angelic gift because now that we have all of these Bloodbond vampires, that can be a pretty big thing. It also cycles through the deck and gives you a little bit of velocity when going through the cards. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm choking. I'm still going to take the uh, whew, Shadow Glider. I think that's a little more consistent, and this gives us 23 cards I'm happy playing. Uh, but it's close. I'm going to hack the process. Actually, I'm going to take the Great Horn. I don't think I want it, but Processor Assault kind of sucks. Well, I don't need more big stuff, and this guy isn't an ally, but it is a thing we could do if we want to do things. And we did get a Lithomancer's Focus. That, that I may play over the Myers Malice. Like, I, I probably bring the Malice in against a deck that is like dirtily or some sort of rampy deck where we think we can get some value out of it because we've, we've sort of already got um you make this a little bigger while we're doing the deck construction we've sort of already got um built-in six drops already 
If you look at Sheer, sheer Drop, can be a six drop. Um, Undo Rising can be a five drop. In fact, it most often is. So that would put us more like here, right? I think I like the uh, Unified Front. I think I'm pretty happy with that, and I think I'm happy running um, 18, excuse me, 16 lands. Yeah, I get that Retreat to Amiria would, would like to play more lands, but it's it's kind of neat in that you're happy drawing lands and you're happy drawing non-lands. What do we have that is not an ally? And is there an ally we could replace it with? I think the only thing we have that's not an ally is our Medic, our Gliders. So I'm kind of wondering if I can actually run this ally encampment. Is the risk of having an off-color land justified by the advantage of bouncing an ally? Like, I, I can see some, some benefits. Oh, I guess these familiars aren't allies either. Yeah, I'm kind of kind of nervous about that. Because, like, you don't really want to bounce your own Blood Bond vampires once you've pumped them up. It's kind of cute to bounce the Angel of Renewal and gain a bazillion life. But, you know, that does what it does. Let's see what we want to do here. What do our mana requirements look like? I mean, let's actually get an ally count. We've got like three minutes. We can do that. So it casts these. It casts that. Am I missing anybody? It doesn't cast these. So it's less than half the cards in our deck, and then bouncing them is relatively minimal value. Yeah, I don't think we actually play it, which is a shame because if, if I'd thought that through completely, I think I would have just taken the uh, the white land and been pretty happy with it. But as it goes, I think we'll go 9-8. Um, I was thinking the other way, actually. 9-8 white. Wouldn't I want to do that? Well, I guess I only ever need one white. And I do need two blacks for, the, for these. Yeah, we're probably okay with that then, going 8-8. And calling it there. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right, we're going to load this up and uh, head into round one. We will see you there in just a minute. Hopefully we get to play three rounds. Deck. This looks like the best version of the black-white life gain I, deck I have been able to put together. So be interested to see how it turns out. And uh, don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what you think about the drafting portion. We will see you in game one in just a moment. <laughs> 